Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Witch doctor. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds Talk remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Shadow Fiend. Dire Team Ban. <laughs> Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten Crystal seconds meaning. remaining. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Juggernaut. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining.
Welcome back, everybody, here to game number two, Monkey versus Team Liquid. I would ask who you're actually favoring in this game, but considering Shane already said he wanted to go for monkeys in Cap 1 Liquid, I'm assuming you're going to enjoy the monkeys lap a little bit more. My boy Shane. Yeah. Number one right. Do you actually agree with it, though? Do you actually think that the monkeys line up the, the pressure is enough from them to force liquid into a rough position i mean i think that shane is probably the best mechanical player on that couch so i'd agree with him uh, he actually understands what he's talking about uh quote unquote analyst desk <laughs> we'll just we'll put those in air quotes <laughs> all right let's Let's look to our game, man, because I'm I'm looking at this and, and listening to the analysts quote. Uh, All right, no, no, no. To, I'm going to give you a serious. I'm going to give yeah, you a serious. Yeah, but please, please give you a serious okay. answer right now, because I'm 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 concerned myself that like I'm not agreeing with the panel because I'm looking at Liquid with Ember and Queen of Pain having trouble finding space to come online. If they come online. I agree, like, Liquid should be looking really damn good. But Monkey can add so much pressure so early on, if they get that early mech on the SF, and then add a healing ward, and then the ore and Liquid Fire, they could do a lot of damage, from my perspective. I think that's actually what they're going to go for. Uh, I don't see how the Jug fits into this lineup, aside from just uh, the healing ward, because his ultimate, when you look at it bare bones, isn't going to do much against either the cores of Liquid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when it comes to the late game, that's what that's what matters core on core action like wh which core can deal more damage and i think the queen of pain and the uh, ember spirit are going to have more success in that regard so what it really comes down for monkey business is can you get the uh the ball rolling quickly can you get the mech really quick on the shadow fiend and then kind of play that five man style where you don't have the best control factor but you can kind of heal through whatever liquid have for burst like if you look at liquid's lineup the one thing they're really bad at is creep clear you don't want to commit the Queen of Pain ulti just to creep clear, but that's about all you have. Like, the level 2 or 3 Slide of Fist without any damage items behind it are... It's kind of useless. Maybe, uh, maybe that's when you look for, like, a higher point up in Nova early on. Yeah, but that even then, that's not perfect. And so, yeah. I think if Monkey Business can just kind of get the ball rolling around oh, the top lane, 20 minutes. Shots, mark. doesn't lock with Tubberman in. I was actually expecting a snowball in to some kind of extra control on Tubberman. But that's not going to happen. Yeah, they just use shards so they can't, he can't yeah. have snowball as well. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said, like, is because he didn't he didn't level up. Obviously I'm just not messing level two with yet. you, Toby. <laughs> Thanks, Blitz. You, you know my brain just basically I just, before I gotta, we start this game. <laughs> I gotta kind of give you, you know, keep you on your toes for fun. That's that's fine. Just don't give me the same level of crap that you give Cap. Yeah, and, uh, give Cap and I'm all Cap good. Love. That's, that's love. That's, that, that's, that's a very rough love, man. Alright, so this top lane though, it should be kind of a wash. It seems like they really favor doing the dual lanes like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of reminds me of what NIP like to do, but it feels like Monkey is a little bit more fluid in what they do. Like uh, they're willing to control? take this. You're taking a lot of damage from this man. He's going to Cogs burn off crit, but that's not really what stops Shakira from doing his work. He actually ended up in a man fight with him, but only had Cogs leveled up. It's okay. Because the, the creep wave is going to push out anyways. And he's just making it tough for crit to get in his face. You set the tempo of the game. Uh, okay. And he's going to get gonna get a full wave anyways right here. Just also want to flag something else that happened. This actually happened before we even hit the zero minute mark. Uh, it's the fact that the Observer Ward on the top lane, which was planted by Monkeys, it was dewatered very early on for this dire sentry ward that was planted. And Liquid actually put that sentry ward inside the camp. So they still blocked the own pull point. Fade up, middle lane. Can he actually do another one? No, he can't. Miracle will end up surviving just back behind the tower. Now his bottle will arrive. And even the pressure on bottom lane between... Oh, mid lane! Are they going again? Miracle God! <laughs> Have mercy! And that bottle arrived and then he just went for it with the help of Fly. I don't even know if Fly, uh, Fly obviously helped, but that double raise by Miracle is pretty disgusting. And this is a lane that Queen of Pain will win early on, Toby, uh, but she falls off hard because the defensive power of the, the SF is incredibly strong. Like, yeah. All you do is you spam out raises. If she gets hit by one raise, can no longer man fight uh, the Shadow Fiend. So it's so, pretty so, so what do you do? Like, You want to push farther out of the mid lane to, to find some space elsewhere? I, if you're the Shadow Fiend, you just continue to play passive. You got first blood and you solo killed. Uh, well, not solo killed, but you got a kill on the Queen of Pain. Mm -hmm. uh, Fada pretty much has to get a gank or he has to get active on the other side of the map because when it comes to last hitting now, there's no way that the Queen of Pain is going to keep up anymore. Well, that is the beauty about like a Queen of Pain. Like It's all about rotation. Matumbaman, top lane. The shards making his way to walk a long way around. The snowball control is going to be enough. The searing chains not working perfectly. Sorry, the side of fists. They want to keep going. Yeah, they, they had he had nothing to evade. 
And now Jirax oh, there's no juice is caught in the tree line. The Hawk is up. They actually cut through the trees with the axes. And this is three for zero. This could be a very, like, it was 2-0 to Liquid last time these teams faced up. Now it's looking very, very different. These kind of off-the-wall lanes are messing with Liquid so much. Like, Matumba Man typically doesn't get pressured in any of the games. And it really feels like Monkey Business kind of just have the blueprint right now. They're saying, okay, we got 2 last time. We didn't apply a lot of pressure to Matumba Man. Mm -hmm. This time, we're going to run these dual lanes, take him out of his comfort zone, and make him work for it. Now they gave me a crack at top lane. Moon Meander was, should actually die here with both Malediction and the Burn. He turns around to do as much damage to g -Rex as possible, and this will allow for the Snowball to arrive with a double stun into the shards. But top of now, he doesn't have much more to work with. Searing Chains is now coming off cooldown, which will end up helping him out. Clockwork also got a kill on Jakiro in the meantime. That is a surprise. He actually got a, well, yeah. Inside the Radiant jungle, he caught him out. That's going to help a lot, and it's going to alleviate some of the pressure from this top lane. Uh, just because the support in, in this dual lane scenario, when he's trying to protect No-Tail, uh, can't afford to die. This may not... Okay, yeah. Kuro is going to come over and buy him a little bit more space here. But that's a full creep wave, and the snowball committal comes in from Fly. He was already salving up, he's got a lot of his life back, and the axes are back off cooldown. That's a level 2 axe, and Matumba have been slowed down by the ball, but they want to get Koro. He's more of a guaranteed kill here. If they can just get one axes and then just one physical attack in on Koro, that'll do the work. There's a physical attack. The mind control rotates before he's level six. The powers in cast won't bounce, but the battery has stopped. Mumi and it turns for the axes. Oh, no. He gets the kill before the end. I'm surprised Koro is stuck around for that. So it'll end up being a 1 1 trade off, and you rotate the clockwork early. They wanted to absolutely secure that kill, but this is so unfortunate, and I mean, Miracle, he's doing what we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> Unable to really get control in this mid lane. Vada can't really do too much, but uh, Miracle's just getting pinged out. They're saying, watch out a little bit. This dual off lane, Toby, is making it impossible for this Queen of Pain to do anything. Like, she can't rotate to the safe lane to get any kills. Uh, there's too many levels now, and in this mid lane, if she actually leaves, you're giving up almost too much space to Miracle. Yeah. And I think he even goes for the kill on the Queen or the Crystal Maiden in the jungle. Like, if I were him, just go kill, double raise, very simple. And Crow probably doesn't see this coming at all. No. And like, like, how can you? SF goes missing, and now Miracle raise one, one attack, and then a second, which will give him the max range raise. If you stuck around a little bit longer, actually, they're going on bottom lane. Yep, they're in pretty deep here. As there's your Sonic Wave, no tail, so low on life, the one shot will not keep him alive. And that's part of successful rotation. That's exactly what he wanted. Crit, however, this isn't what he wants. Oh, they know. The rocket ends up revealing him. He doesn't have a TP spawn oh, himself. Stuck. <laughs> oh, wait, he can't, wait, okay, yeah, Father's gonna come back out with a blink. But because he blinks, the mana is pretty low. Ball charging up, and there we go. My control will end up taking the kill. And that's some good, there's some good kills coming back in the way of Liquid. They but it's, it's still a that. very big SF. Yeah, and probably more problematic is, uh, like you talked about, the Shadow Fiend is getting free farm during this entire time, but... They're getting top? They're getting top. Paralyzing Cast Kelps out. Well, okay. Snowball buying that critical time, and Crit puts down an Ice Path. He goes for Liquid Fire too, and the Dual Breath has to be used here, but it's all a little bit too late. The Ice Path at the wrong position for the Snowball, so it didn't buy enough space for Fly to get back out. But at the same time, I'm watching Moon Meander prepare for mid lane. This is huge for Liquid right now, though. They're finally starting to get some control back into the lanes, and mind control with these rotations. Oh, he can make this happen. He found Moon Meander. He meant to go for the SF, but he locks Moon Meander inside the cogs. But that's not what you want to have. Miracle just turns in for a couple of raids. But top of it, that's what you do want to have. The Searing Chains of Miracle. He turns for one last raid. Oh, they're probably going to Realizing he's going to die. The shards will fly out, but it's not enough of a block. Moon Meander has a one charge that's available, but the damage output from Liquid is still there with the rotation in from Farda. They ensure the two kills on Beastmaster and S that SF. That's the bigger thing. They've stopped SF in his tracks. Yeah, this was such a huge rotation by Liquid, and this is all made possible by Mind Control being able to pick off heroes left and right. Uh, he was 4-1. and one. He has his level 6 early enough to go for that, and unfortunately he dies before that point, but it's a worthwhile sacrifice because now Fada's in a much better position than he was two minutes ago. Like, he rotates, gets two kills at the bottom lane for his team, and then at the same time they finally take down the Shadow Fiend. This is going to slow down the snowball effect that we were starting to see mm -hmm. early on, and it's going to help Fada catch up because now he doesn't feel as pressured to have to win this lane because of the rotations that paid off. The only downside for Fada, though, is he, d he didn't actually get the kills. He got five assists. Out of, out of his rotation, so we never actually got the last hit, never got the the heavier injection of money. It's okay though, because look how poor Crit is right now. Like, 
from a support standpoint, Liquid is actually doing okay. Uh, whereas one of Monkey's supports, because of that solo kill that Mind Control was able to get off on crit, now you're starting to see the far-reaching effects later on in the game where 8 minutes in, he's got 400 net worth. Goodbye, SS. Once again, the dream at the mech is not real, but while all this is going on, okay, well, bottom lane, Chris being attacked by Matumbaman, he's still got the ice pass available, he's gonna actually tag into Matumbaman, he tries to juke it around inside the tree line, can't reach it in time. And Matumbaman will just back up, but what I was gonna point out direction is up towards the top lane. Because there's no tell as well as Moon Meander teaming up together. They'll take this top tier one tower, but what is the cost? The Omni Slash goes to work, taking, taking out Koro. And with the healing ward still up, they have a little bit more life, but not enough for no tell to survive. So you take the tier one tower, but you're losing out quite heavily. The Ember Spirit is barely surviving. These Harpies are chasing him down. Help with the damage, and he's actually going to TV himself out. There's no snowball, there's no shards. So they'll get away with it. The pace of the game right now, Liquid. Uh, Monkey's having a really hard time dealing with it right now, and they're going to rotate another hero mid. It's going to be Curl with the Frostbite, but can't really do too much. Uh, getting the kill... Onto the Queen of Pain was quite lucky for no tail. Like, if you saw, he was in the middle of three different heroes, and it yep. just happens to bounce to him twice. Like, that could have conceivably been uh, one for zero. You get the carry, and no tail's actually really under farmed right now. Like, he barely has more than the Ember Spirit, who was really heavily contested right now, and uh, you need your jug to be able to snowball. And right now, uh, they were able to get another kill onto the Shadow Fiend, which is going to slow down the mech further and just kind of give Liquid a little bit of breathing room and allow Mind Control to kind of set the pace of the game. Like, this is the ideal scenario. Let your Clockwork get levels and farm, and then allow him to kind of just make the movements around the map and create space for all the other cores. And you're seeing that real be really successful right now so far. I'm actually wondering if, uh, if Monkeys can even push before they get the mech. Because you do still have Liquid Fire, so finding near the towers isn't as bad. Uh, but they can't need to know where the rest of Liquid is moving. If you check out their vision at the moment, uh, the Hawks are coming out, but Kuro's been doing a pretty damn good job of just novering them down whenever he feels like he knows where they are. And the only Obs Ward on the field for Monkeys is the Obs Ward on the top of the mid lane dire site. So they don't see Liquid moving into the Radiant Jungle. They won't see it when they're smoked up like we are now with Kuro and Mind Control. They're searching for the SF stacks, which just don't exist. Yeah, the Shadow Fiend had a great time in mid, and he also got that gank off on the Crystal Maiden. Like, he's been using a lot of his time to just go around the map and create space for his team. Uh, but you'd like to see Miracle have a little bit more farm, especially considering that he got the solo... Or, uh, the Oak shot first goes in middle lane, catching out Miracle. He's still got 14 one charge. The snowball buys a little bit of space here, but it won't be enough. Not when Matumaman jumps through on the back of the spirits. They take 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 two very quick kills, but Notel goes into the spin. Farda, the oh, blink is up. Call down. He takes a long time. Now he'll finally get out, but the Omni Slice is available, jumping around, but it is too late. You only get a kill on a clockwork. But you lose three heroes for this one. So close to killing a Farda, which would have made this a little bit of an even trade. But still, Liquid getting another advantage in a team fight again i think even if you kill fada there that isn't worth it at all you lose two cores no tail decides to spin in but it's a queen of pain you have no idea when her blinks up that's way too yolo of a uh, maneuver and you can't really afford to throw these kills away because he's already died twice and he's been struggling this game this is just going to send him back even further yeah and fada is just starting to snowball as is the ember spirit who's the recipient of most of these kills like you talked about like yeah fada isn't getting a lot of these last hits but he's got nine assists and matumba man already has five kills to his name yep you called it perfectly before, man. Mind Control is the man that's making this happen. When you lock down the SF, so there's no Requiem of Souls, and even Miracle, he's having a real hard time getting these souls back, and Monkey's adding as much pressure as they possibly can now to this mid lane, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm actually fully for this. You've still got Omni Slash available. You make the most Liquid Fire. Try and restrict the movement of Liquid, because right now Liquid are moving like they own this map. The Snowball will come, and where are you actually headed to? It's after the Ember Spirit who just jumped back at the Defensive Spirit. They're just trying to waste time right now, and uh, I think Liquid actually want to take this fight because they understand that the mech still isn't available. The mm -hmm. healing ward is down too, and he actually snipes two hawks, two birds with one rocket. And they get the necro units too. Oh, they got to be careful right now. They're pretty stacked up. Uh, Ice Pass only getting hit on Matumba, onto Matumba though. And that T1 tower is just outside of deny range. So one last push from Monkey. They'll take this out. Liquid will, att Liquid will attempt the denial. But Liquid also understands that no tells push back here. Like, he's waiting for this creep camp to spawn up at the moment, but the Dire Observer Ward is right on top of it. So Liquid know that Monkey's aren't in the greatest position to push this. But here we go again with the Liquid Fire. No fortification available. 
The shards trying to keep them out, and the denial will be there from the Jakiro. Uh, sorry, the attack will be there from the Jakiro. The liquid fire tick is what gets the last hit. They've got to be careful right now. Liquid, they don't want to throw away the lead that they just built up. They've got a lot of map control right now because of the clockwork having the levels that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, but Monkey can just decide to go for all of these five man pushes. Like, the mech's almost completed from the Shadow Fiend. Liquid's still doing okay though. Like, their two main cores are still really farmed, and it's a Beastmaster that's ahead of a Juggernaut right now, which isn't something you want to see. And they've got a lot of different ways to deal with the Jug. Like, if he attempts to try to spin TP out, then you can always initiate with the Clock Hook. And you've got so much mobility in your two cores, in the Queen of Pain and the Ember Spirit, that you're not going to see a lot of the damage that you want out of uh, No Tail's ultimate. So what it really comes down to is being able to smo uh, snowball into the mid-game really strongly. Liquid are coming again. But they keep preparing themselves up on this high ground inside the Radiant Jungle. Every time just up on the hillside. Now, Jurek's going to get scouted out by the Hawk. He can't get it with another attack, so he throws the cask instead. What they're trying to do is force them to go to that bottom tower. Like, Matumba Man, if you notice, he's pressuring this, and they're hoping to pincer Monkey in. No, but the rocket the sees ground. everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, Mind Control just re reads the situation perfectly. They understand this is a bait for Monkey. But I suppose, like, it's still forcing Liquid to come into the fight. Like, you have the mech fully done. You've got Roar and Necro books available. Omni Slash, there's not enough mana for it at the moment, but he's got 13 one charges available. Now he's actually got the mana. But this tier 2 tower is being brought down. They catch out G-Rex. The snowball in, so there's no Witch Doctor in this fight. But the TP, they're coming in. No Tail's trying to deny it off, and actually successful at doing so. This will strand the Ember Spirit on the bottom lane, allowing for the Omni Slash forward into Farda. So it'll be a tier 2 tower lost in the mid. No way for the Ember to come back to the fight. And Liquid just have to accept the fact they lose this tier 2 tower. That conceivably could have been an okay fight, but the Ember Spirit gets his TP cancelled by the Juggernaut, and he doesn't want to commit for it anyways. Uh, you're going to take the bottom tier 1 tower at the same time, but still, giving up that tier 2 just means that Monkey Business are going to kind of feel emboldened and continue to just go for the 5-man. And this is what we were concerned about in the first place, Yep, is that No Tail's hero isn't going to be there to deal damage. It's pretty much just to be a frontline tank and for the healing ward. Like, you see him prioritize it. It's already three levels, just level 9. Uh, no stats on this guy. And when it comes to the farm, he doesn't have a lot, and he should get behind versus the Ember Spirit, but that's not really the point of this lineup. Like, the point of this lineup is not to really have a true one position. Yeah. That designation probably goes to Miracle, but even he's just gone for the mech. Probably gonna get a BKB soon after. See, my, my concerns are still there too. Like, I'm not feeling like Matubum is doing enough during this fight, and this Queen of Pain hasn't finished up the Orchid yet, so... Like, you talk about the, the problem with, with, uh, with the Juggernaut not really being there, but I'm not feeling like Liquid are there at the fight either. No, no, I was talking about the Ember. Oh, you were talking, okay, so you're talking yeah. about that. Okay. I just meant that the I Jug isn't going to contribute anything to the fights. Like, when it comes to DPS, it's yeah. just this healing ward that's meant to keep these pushes uh, sustained. Okay. And Miracle's got the mech too, just for any of the burst damage. So this is a really intelligent lineup by Mon Monkeys right now. And I think you just go for the Tier 1 bottom and then go for the Roshan immediately thereafter. Like, get an Aegis onto your Shadow Fiend, then you can play incredibly aggressively. Radiance and they're so ready for this too. Another Radiance smart movement, they're coming down. Positional advantage will be here, because Kuro is currently oh, making a bit of a run across the You're river. So dead. Now, they saw him run. And the Ember Spirit is also just jumping around inside the Radiant Jungle, farming this up. Puts the Defensive Spirit out, so Matumbaman shouldn't die here unless uh, Monkeys break right. But with the Blink forward from Fada, okay, that is a long cooldown, but he he's so got a hatred. He runs all the way into the T1 tower. They can Walrus punch him up with the Razors, they can get enough damage in in time. It was actually the attack from the tower, which did the last hit, but with no Queen of Pain, the ping instantly came from Monkeys to go for Roshan. I'm not so sure about that. I don't think you do. They've got rockets, uh, you don't have the best way to do it immediately. I guess the healing ward could keep it up, but you don't really want to fight into that vacuum when you've got a uh, Clockwork, an Ember Spirit, and a Queen of Pain on the other side. Yeah, if that, and co also if that the Witch splits ultimate. you and... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Just go for the safe pushes. You've been doing fine right now if you're Team Monkey. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing. Attack into the Tier 1 town, there's no fortification, so... Nothing's really going to stop them. They can take both the Tier 1 and the Tier 2 tower. Uh, you still got Moon Meander here. Is he waiting for the crew to deliver him? What level book is it? It's level 2 book now arrived. So this Tier 2 tower is toast. They try for the trade, but Fly is going to stop that push in the mid lane. And up on top lane, Matumbleman is pushing towards that Tier 1 tower, but he's also like, even if you do take this Tier 1 tower, it's a Tier 1 and 2 trade-off for what was the pick on the Quap and a Tier 1, Tier 2 on bottom lane, and No Tail's already TPing in. 
very aggressively the front lines, and he wants to stop on top of him, but he's got no stun. So just has to let him go. He could use the ulti there for the mini stun, but I don't think it's worth it. Like that probably would have been only to cancel the TP, and that alone is. Do they still? It. I thought they removed that. I, I I shouldn't question. Never mind. Because I'm not sure about that. Ah, oh, I'm getting thumbs up. Yeah, they removed the they removed the mini stun. Oh, did they? Yep. Thumbs up. I thought the only thing they changed was the F blade. Oh, my top of them is in a lot of trouble. Okay. <laughs> okay. No child trying to keep up with it. Miracles of the neighborhood, but my top of them's got no spirits left. So he knows he's dead. The ice path will connect. And Miracle with one raise. Ah, oh, he got the flame gun up in time with a the snowball. They commit. They want this Ember Spirit dead. And they will be able to take it. That's fine though, he solo kills the Juggernaut, and you have to force four heroes to rotate over. This mm -hmm. is gonna allow Fada to just continue to farm a little bit more. And that'll finally bring in this Orchid of his. Yeah, like, that that was a fine trade. Like, mm -hmm. he puts a lot of pressure, he forces a bunch of heroes over, and he solo kills No-Tail. That's well worth it for Matoma, man. Yep. You reveal where all five heroes are at the same time, so Fada's just gonna push this bottom area. Unfortunately, the Hawk's right there, but he's probably gonna get in range and scream it, yep. I'm a little concerned though what um what's still gonna happen. Like so Father's finding himself some kill potential. But at the same time I'm looking at a support Jakiro who is getting very, very close to finishing his Yule Scepter. And once this is up, the Ember Spirit's having a world of hurt, because the Flame Guard just gets dispelled by the Yules. You get Ice Path up as well without the ability to jump out because it's the instant stun. So what do you what do you really do when you have like either Ember or Queen of Pain taken out of the fight that quick? I mean, it's fine. He can still get in and out. The mobility of the hero is still really strong as long as he doesn't get roared. And with Slide of Fist and his ultimate up, he should be fine. Oh, that spirit. Matumba, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? 600, Slide of Fist in. The Ice Path actually stops him. He could have spirit jumped in, but had no instant way out. Uh, but the Ice Path from Crit makes sure it's not possible. That would have been so risky anyways. I don't think you put the game on that. Liquid aren't that far behind. Uh, they're about 4k. Like, that's not desperation territory quite yet. Where you have to go for those plays. Like, maybe this, if it was 15 20, yeah. This fight's really gonna be difficult though. Like, you got a BKB freshly on this SF. The Aegis, the Immortal, and Mech on him. Even a haste room for positioning during the fight. But beyond that, like, you got the sustain from Healing Ward, you got the sustain from Mech, and you got the Liquid Fire on top of the, on top of the Tier 3 tower. So, this push. Really is quite easy for them. Their only problem is the fact that uh, Jakiro is not there yet. He's still back at the riverside. And now a miracle? Okay. That's early from Jirax. Yeah, that's probably going to just prompt them to go for the high ground. They know that. Like, Unless the that's death the plan. Is pretty significant damage. Like, all that does is force out a mech and the healing ward that was going to go down anyways. Mm -hmm. Just keep going for the push. Like, this is where the juggernaut's strong. You're not going to keep up when it comes to. Oh, they forced off him up. My control. He's there on the front lines. And Miracle BKB winds up the ulti with the double ice pop into the Omni Slash as well. Liquid of Loss 2 right now. And Fada roared up as well. They move back over looking for the crit hit. And you do have Fada down low in the ice pop again with the Macro Pyre. Liquid. They are burning at the moment. At least you get that sort of oh, damage. Jakaro! A double kill! Almost able to find crit with the help there of Jirax. Miracle is still alive after the Aegis. He wanna bring it back up. He's the last man standing! The Crystal Maiden actually turning the oh, fight my. around for Liquid who just did it! Oh, I can't even believe that Kuro does that. <gasps> like oh. that ultimate. My lord. God, can we see that again in slow motion? I would love to see that again in slow motion. <laughs> look at the XP change. It just gains casual two th uh, 2k XP. And if you look at the fight recap for damage, 2,000 damage came out of uh, the Crystal Maiden in that fight. More than the Queen of Pain, just slightly under the Ember Spirit, who got like three sleight of fists off. That was so absurd. That just saved the game for Liquid. It really, like... A five-man just... wipe? I, I think it does okay for them. It does, it does pretty damn good, man. But still, that I, I still want to give massive props to Crit. Like ice path after ice path, that perfect macro pyre. It did all the work, but they just seemed to run out of disables at that point. That was a pure support duel. Like the Jakiro did so much in that fight, being able to set it up. Fada had to use the buyback, if I'm not mistaken. There, you uh, are not mistaken. They actually had uh, two buybacks, both Kuro as well as Fada bought back. And yeah, here it is. Here it is. Just, just, just watch it. Just, it's, it's so good. I had no idea it was gonna do that much. Now, like, this was they so actually absurd. Drop, they dropped so low, and then that slide of fist damage, because they're all grouped up, so the Battle Fury actually got so much cleave, and Kuro just puts the, the chilling ice on the cake. Well done by Liquid, being oh. able to hold that. And this is all you have to do, slow down the timing of Monkey, and Monkey's 
uh, monkey business is going to feel a little bit afraid now because they went for that push with the Aegis and they weren't quite able to break Rex. And that's going to be a little bit disconcerting, but uh, they're just going to smoke up. They know that a lot of buybacks are on cooldown and they just have to kind of make sure that the Crystal Maiden doesn't get <laughs> a full duration ultimate off again. And that's going to be a much easier task when you know as a result of that last fight, okay, that has to be a... Uh, yeah. Some concern for us, like we have to pay attention to that. I would still also be very careful about that grouping. Like you saw it on the replay, there were four heroes from Monkey all grouped up together, and they all got cleaved from that battle fury of of Matumba. So when he went for the start of fist, that was what did most of the damage before Kuro then just finished the job. It was definitely star points. He definitely did a crap ton of damage at the end. But yeah, I'd also look for the spacing of Monkey a little bit more. They and they are, over they are gonna fall back. Yeah, they got incredibly over eager. After they got the kill, they're just like, okay, let's just keep going. Uh, they probably were just like, oh, we're gonna 2 0 them. Here's the game. We're gonna wipe out three heroes, go for the push. Unable to do so. And I mean, Matumba Man just continues to harass this bottom lane. And he just harangues Monkey right now. Like, it's so difficult for them to go for that five man push when you know the Ember Spirit's getting a lot out of farm mm -hmm. during the time that you're doing that. And once he comes back into the fights, he just slide a fist, slide a fist, slide a fist. Ends your push. Like what do you he's think... got enough farm to do that now. What do you think about Miracle's progression for items? So he's going to go into the S and Y build. Like, I know this was pretty favorable at the end of last patch, where we saw a lot of, like, 32 minutes uh, S and Ys coming out from all regions, in fact. But is this the game where you want to be looking at this? I just think that the... If you go for Scotty or something like that, or a Butterfly, I think Miracle's dead, actually. It comes in too late. My control is right on top of him with an Invis rune, and... They don't have enough heroes, though. You need the Queen of Pain or the Ember Spirit if you want to do this. Yeah, my control's just going to trail him. They had Kuro and Jirax moving in for it, though. Now it's top lane, Glimmer Cape in, and they're looking for Matumba. Snowball, well, turn around. And that scout's out farther, but... Matamba's already TPing himself away to safety and finally blinked himself far enough away. If you're liquid right now, the game plan is just delay, 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 and eventually hope that the Ember gets so strong that if they decide to go for a push, it's going to be counterproductive. And all of a sudden, this is like the sneakiest Aghanim Scepter I've ever seen on a Witch Doctor. Like, I don't understand how he did it, but he's level 13 with an Ags. Like, we talked about Jarex being a slow starter, and in that last game, it took him like 35 minutes to get to level 6. Like, I, I don't even know if he got it by the end of that last game, but... This time around, he does have the Aghanim Scepter on the Witch Doctor. This might be one of the best support upgrades that you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. Like, this one item pretty much turns him into a core for the next five minutes. It almost changes Monkey's approach to the fight as well. Now this Blink Dagger, which is what I'm assuming Moomian is trying to build in towards. Uh, okay, Necro Units goes for the raw access to clean the path up. He needs to burn a lot of mana right now. The Spirit Jump will happen, but... Okay, solo kill fail on bottom lane. Matumba's away to safety. They just continue to waste time. Matumba Man understands that if the Beastmaster's there, the rest of the team's probably uh, nearby. So just go for the split push, wait things out, continue to farm and make it so that monkey business feel like they have to go for the five man. And by doing so, he's just going to get further and further ahead of the Juggernaut, who starts to kind of become a non-factor against these cores. Mm -hmm. like he only has a he has an S and Y, no Basher, no Scotty. He's not really a huge threat to you just yet. TFB's coming up to top. No tell instantly into the spin. Matumbaman hanging around a little bit longer, but um, he's hanging around as long as he had the creep wave, and that helps him finish his Crystalis. I'm not as certain about this from Beastmaster. Like, this almost makes me think the monkeys don't want to try and win the game within the next 10 minutes, so they're, they're holding back on the push because he built BTs, not the Blink Dagger. I think it's the other way around. I think this is just to deal with. Uh, the Amber Spear, so he can't continue to split push you, so that you can go for these side pushes, the side lane pushes, and then, and then just join the rest of the yeah, team. Yeah, exactly. And then you can see that too, just because uh, No Tail has the Blink Dagger. And this is not supposed to be a late game item. This is meant to be positioning at its best. Just try to get a good Omni Slash wherever I can. Follow yeah. through with it if you can too. I believe you can blink during it. I don't actually build it very often. I'm almost 100% sure that you can use items though. You mean blink during Omni? Yeah. I don't know myself. I think you can do shorts, but I'm not sure. The, this blink dagger timing, though, is... is like We've been seeing a decent chuck of Juggernaut throughout the qualifiers, and this has been around the right time for it. Yeah. So it's, it's become more of a standard item. I'm so sorry that I'm bad with mechanics, by the way. Like, <laughs> I apologize to all the viewers that I didn't know the mini something. I'm so bad at the patch log stuff. Don't worry, man. It's my weak point. I would say I cut you back a bit. No, the, the <laughs> fact that you had to correct me for that last one, it kind of just like... <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, this is a kill for sure at yeah. bottom, though. They oh, yeah, he's got it! No! Oh, that timing on that sleight of fist! Oh, my god! 
Yeah. He just wanted to take, like, he just didn't, like, Monkey Thief did a fraction of a second longer to get in range for Mumi and his raw. He didn't even mean to do that. He's just like, oh, I'm gonna slide a fist. Once that out. Glimmer Cape ends, he just sees the tail end of it. But Monkey would have also been expecting that. There's a slide a fist and then straight spirit away. Oh, like, you push the lane, that's all he's trying to do right now. Because it buys still so much more space. Again, look at Fada, he doesn't go for the BKB, he goes for the Scythe of Vice instead. They're going for the straight control burst. I like that a lot. They're just, and all of their items so far are just pure late game damage. Like, you can deal with so many different heroes with what Liquid have right now. And Monkey is probably just waiting for the next Roshan. Like, that's definitely what they're waiting for right yeah, now. But you they're waiting the, next... the maximum time. That's the max three minutes to do Roshan. Yeah. If you're confused as a viewer, by the way, what the game plan right now for Liquid is, they know that eventually Monkey Business is going to run out of steam. So what they're doing is they're prepping for that Maybe one fight where they're just so overwhelmingly strong when it comes to net worth and items. And so... Then Monkey just kind of loses steam, and then they just lose the game. And it looks like it's still up for grabs. Like, Fada is debating between the Lincolns and the Hex. I think he wants the Lincolns just so he doesn't have to worry about the Jakiro or the Beastmaster. But the Hex would be so But he still good. has to worry about the Beastmaster. Like, that roll is still going to penetrate the Lincolns. I felt... No? Doesn't? Okay. No, that one I know for sure. Okay. For some reason, I thought it didn't actually trigger it. Like, you still get stunned up. You don't take the damage, though. But that was in the back of my mind. Yeah, okay. I'm leaving mechanics alone. I'm pulling out of this one. We're both idiots. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> We're going to be irrelevant once OD Pixel gets better at this game anyways. Yeah. Let's just, uh, you I'm, know. I'm already planning my retirement. Like, TI6, last big event for me. Yeah, let's just relax. Take it easy a little bit. It's not like we get paid uh, to know I'm, this stuff. No, I'm just going to I'm gonna retire and just make Nature's Profit Guide videos all day. Very good, like that, very that's good. That's it. I'm embarrassed, though, about my lack of, like, mechanical knowledge this game. This was pretty bad. We actually Not lost our paddle. Our paddle had gone outside to listen to, uh, listen were, to the game. They were disgusted, but uh, the pace of this game, again, monkey business... <laughs> It's not to their liking, because that should have been the Rax push for sure, when you had the Aegis the first time. But because of that Crystal Maiden ultimate, you delay the game even further. Mm -hmm. uh, monkey business don't really want to have to pay, play the pace of the game by that Aegis. They actually look like they just want to force it now, which is surprising when Crit uses his macro pyre to push out the wave. Like, ah, I know it's, a one, it's like a one minute cooldown, but they want to push on this wave. No, I think you wait for the Roshan. There's no reason not is to. Is that it? Yeah. It's, well, it's Ro effective, but yeah. Roshan is in two to three seconds, and you still got all those problems you were listing like 20 minutes ago about how Liquid can counter the attack on Roshan. I mean, with the spirit in here, it's not necessarily like you can take care of the spirit. The spirit will survive. Yeah, they're going to know about it too. Yeah. The spirit just spot this out. Uh, Liquid, I think you the take this fight. Okay, the, the spirit just timed out. So they've lost their vision inside the pit until the rocket then arrives, and when someone throws in a new spirit, and the spin's actually used very early here by no -tell, into the death oh, ward from Gear Ward, and they're bouncing up by my control! He hookshotted himself into a ball, so he doesn't find the proper initiation, and Fana, at a long way, uses the Orchid on Moon Meander. Now, Roshan's a little bit pissed. Oh, There's a lot of people on his lawn right, right now, and Roshan's about to die. There's no death ward in the shards. It keeps out Liquid. So, Monkey, they can take Roshan. They get the Aegis symbol on the back of Miracle. He never even had to use the mech. They never used Omni Slash. The only thing really expended was Nick. Necrobook. That was 100% a little bit sloppy by them. They decided to go for the fight, and I think you go for the contest there because of the close quarter space. The Ember Spear can do a lot of work. The Queen of Pain can do a lot of work. But the Clockwork Hook actually hits the ball. a boar or one of the Necro Creeps. It, it was the ball. Yeah, and that just kind of stops the momentum entirely. And now this push is going to be a lot stronger. Miracle's just going to front line and Liquid, they don't have to glyph for that range one, but you don't necessarily want to give up this melee one if you can help it. But how do you really take down Miracle? He's really tanky right now. Yeah, he's just, he is that frontline tank. Now the mech charge can be used as crits a little bit lower. But Fada, they just keep trying to chip away at him. The powers and cast causing problems with Fada, caught out by the ice path. They can't capitalize on the damage, however. The death ward, or the healing ward's about to go down too. Yep. They get it back out. They take out the range tracks. I also like this from Monkeys. They did, did this in game number one, where they understand they don't really have the full pass. They don't just go for the melee racks. They go for the guaranteed damage on the range. But they're, they're actually hanging around. You didn't burn a BKB, did you? So, like... You still gotta be careful, though. Even with the Aegis, it's the healing ward plus the mech that allows you to continue the push. Because you don't want to just give up the Aegis for no reason. So you wait 15 seconds. Uh, from No Tail's healing ward to refresh, and then go back into the fight. Okay. Like, there's no way that you f you push without it, because you're just gonna get slide of fist, slide of fist, slide of fist. <laughs> Is that chip damage all the time? An Ember Spirit having that Daedalus and Battle Fury, that slide of fist hurts.
He doesn't have buyback though. I think Fada is, yeah, he's just 30 gold away. So this is probably going to be the most important factor. Ice Bath Miracle just runs himself in. And then Cox make it a little bit more difficult for uh, for Miracle to get that perfect position. But the next units get mopped up. The fortification has to come out from Liquid to keep their melee racks alive. And they just keep waiting. Fada's on the front lines. And now you're Omni Slash. My control just evaporates. As uh, that melee racks now will finally go down. Miracle finishes the job. Still with the Aegis, the Immortal available. Clockwork will buy back here. And there's your hookshot forward. Catching out Miracle. But he BKBs. Winds up the Requiem. Fart up. The Ice Pass won't be able to connect on him. As we split this fight to two. It's the battle inside the base. Where you actually cannot find anything until the Spirits. They jump back. And Miracle. The Death Ward down. The bouncing damage from oh, Jirai. Actually just pushing monkeys out. Here with the corpses back to base. No buybacks really there, it's just the Agency Mortal for Miracle, and it's locked down, perfectly controlled. His death ult, you won't find any kills, but they do still take out the full mid racks. It's at a pretty high cost because Liquid are able to get a couple of kills, but they also had to buy back a mind control. I don't think that even matters. Like, that's definitely an overall win for Liquid. Like, the racks, a set of racks at this point in the game, 34 minutes, when you've got plenty of heroes to deal with it, you're okay with that because the amount of times that Monkey can go for that kind of push is limited. You've got the next Roshan. If you don't take a Rax there and dominate the fight, then conceivably, Liquid can just kind of hold out and win the late game. Yep. Like, look at Matumba Man's farm now. You're not going to get through this hero very easily anymore, and you don't have the best ways to gap close anymore. And he's also creating space for later on. Like, he should be able to finish up this tier 3 tower before monkeys can stop him. Defensive spirits up on the other side of the hill. So, if you do actually have an, one good fight go the way of Liquid, they can potentially take a counter racks on a side lane as well. Yeah, at this point in the game, you are you just traded a set of racks for about 3,000 gold yep. in favor of your team and a bunch of experience. And plus a lot of power. Exactly, that, this is 100% worth it for Liquid. Like, look at the gold graph. It costs you about almost all of it right now just to get that one racks at 35 minutes into the game. Yeah, and that has no bearing on the game anymore. It's the full Dark Knight, man. We got Batman Graph kicking in. And, well, Miracle, not really a position he wants to be in when he gets caught out by the Searing Chain, but Liquid, they also are not going to throw away the advantage they've just managed to gain. And they're actually stacking up on Lincoln's by the looks of it. Unless Mind Control's thinking something else, uh, he's got himself that Perseverance. They're going to smoke up. They want to kind of continue to press this right now. They know with no Aegis available, that's what allows Monkey to continue to fight. You've got a Butterfly now completed on the SF, which is significant, but mm -hmm. uh, No Tails Farm is just not quite been there. He's 4,000 gold behind the other cores, and he's got a Blink Dagger and an SNY, two items that are okay, yes, but they're not meant to really scale with you. Miracle's back to pushing out that middle lane. While on bottom lane, No Tail, this is a chance for Liquid. They jump in, they get the Orc off, and No Tail's dead. No way to come back to life. There is no buyback for him. He's 1,000 gold short of the buyback. And this is bottom racks. Like, without the Juggernaut, like, how are you meant to fight this as monkeys? I don't think you really want to take this fight, because if you lose this fight, you don't have buyback on the Shadow Fiend either, and you can't really afford to lose that hero. But they're still using SF for the front lines. Fada, they get through the Lincoln Spear with a roar as well. Fada, he's gonna burn inside the macro pie. Oh, Nine the Death Lord! With a Death Lord! Miracle will still get the ulti off! This will buy them the time as they Glimmer Cape up. Jirax trapped inside the shards as Miracle goes for the double kill. Jirax, oh, they push the Shadow Fiend out! The Ice Bath can't connect because of it! Saving his life! The TP out from Mind Control! They get away, only losing Fada as well. Well as Koro, the timing, so good. What kind of monster are you, mind control? <laughs> I don't even get this guy. Yeah, that was so absurd on that timing. Like, Jerex 100% should have been dead there, but that butterfly really pays off in that fight, keeps him alive through everything. The death ward was so good, but that Glimmer Cave value by uh, Monkey keeps Miracle alive. That could have conceivably just been a Rax trade. Yep. If it wasn't for that Glimmer Cape and that butterfly too. Good decision by him to not save for the buyback. Man, two amazing highlight moments to kick in right there. The fact that you're able to get that four staff moment, as well as having our Slide of Fist C CM ulti moment back inside the liquid base. That's the dream. Those are the little cute things that look so awesome in Dota. It's just presence of mind, honestly. <laughs> that was sick, though. Matumba Man's got the Demon Edge. Probably gonna go for the MKB now. No reason not to, and Monkey, they just want to slow down the pace of the game, go for the next Roshan. Let's, we can see it again now. 
take that. So the initial control, Jirax's death ward does so much damage at this position. Oh, the top is forced cape. to get back out again. And this is when you can see the ice bath. The ice bath is about to come in and four staff out. Actually looks kind of crazy because the ice path was actually, the animation was over him, but the sun didn't set, apply yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that glimmer cape though, really <laughs> saved Miracle. I don't think they had uh, vision in that fight. Monkey's coming for a fight. That hawk, it gives him the vision of a Tupperman. And Crit? Okay, well the side of fist can be used to get rid of the hawk. And now he has spread himself away with a blinking from fly. Gets the first punch. They roar as well. So Matumbleman dodging a little bit of it, but the ice passed again. 80 seconds on the sideline. He'll have to buy back into this fight. But the death war from Jirax, they need to back out now, monkeys. They've already got the two kills. But they can push in through it and go for a side lane if they want to. That was a mistake. He didn't have enough space on him, and uh, Fada couldn't get the Lincoln Sphere quite onto him. If he was able to, he would have been able to block, and maybe even save his life. But as it stands, Monkey's in a great position now. They can just go for this top rack, force the buyback from the Ember Spirit. But there's no clockwork. That initiation control isn't there. And we saw how critical it was during the last fight, just to get out. Now you got Miracle knocking on your door. The mech has been used, however, but this tier 3 tower just doesn't exist anymore. So monkeys get two good pickoffs. They get a buyback on a big core of liquid, which slows down the extra damage of Matubberman. Like he's got this demon edge on him, but there's nothing more to come. And you took a tier three tower as well. He has to have the MKB now. They don't really have the best way to deal with uh, Miracle. Even taking out Beastmaster. Beastmaster just finished out of Hal, but yeah, you've got the Shiva's guard completed on the Queen of Pain now. At some point, I would like to see a BKB just so she can kind of get in the to the fray of things. Or just build pure damage so that your Ember Spirit doesn't have to be your only way to deal with the uh, Shadow Fiend. But the Shadow Fiend right now is monster. Once he gets a Satanic, it's going to be so hard to bring him down. You don't have that instant burst. You don't have a Hex or anything like that to deal with him when he's really low. Mm -hmm. So that BKB Satanic is going to be especially powerful. But uh, this is just going to mean that Bentumba Man's MKB is even more <laughs> crucial to this. And... Uh, the opening, Kuro so close, the smoke's gonna break, mind control, throws out the rocket, gives him good vision, and they're just getting out of here. Oh, the Kuro's Kuro's so Kuro, they force up him out again, and the hook shot forward by mind control, he's trying to cog and split up monkeys, but there's so much damage when that Omni Slash goes to work, Kuro will survive, but not for long, after that Omni Slash bounces back down with him, no tail into the spin, and there's a real bad fight for Liquid, even with Thunder's only they've taken so much damage, G-Rex, no, he thought you could that one out, he'll get the paralyzing cast, but he'll still end up dying to that Shadow Fiend attack, and this could be it right now for Liquid. You've taken so many casualties. Roshan is up in a fraction of a second. And this will be the safety Rosh as well. The Hawk is over it, so monkeys know everything. Just so many mistakes made by Team Liquid, and I feel like that was just communication errors. Uh, Mind Control decides to go in to try to save a Crystal Maiden, who is pretty much guaranteed dead. And at that point, I feel like all of Liquid should have just been saying to themselves, disengage, disengage, there's no way that we're going to take this fight anymore, but they decide to come in a little bit too hard and... I mean, whatever advantage that they had built up, especially at that bottom fight, where they were able to get that free tier 3 tower and almost kill Miracle, that could have been the game, but... everything's pretty much turned around, especially with that pickoff on that Ember Spirit immediately after that. And with that Roche pickoff too, I think they just go for the high ground now. Yeah, when you go Satanic on the Shadow Fiend, so you know, you you basically got a second life over on Miracle. You've got the real second life with the Aegis Immortal on No-Tail. And the cheesy Beastmaster. Yeah, they're coming to the top. Liquid have to play out of their minds to defend this this high ground from, from uh, the monkey attack. I don't even know how really exactly how they're going to do it. They do have buybacks, however. You got the buyback over on the Quab. But then, is that even going to do much? Because she's going to Sonic Wave and... Then what else is there? You got Shiva's Guard, a little bit of Scream, a little bit of Control. Just like the Witch Doctor is your your primary source of damage when it comes to these fights, just because of the level 3 Aghanim step to Death Ward. You do have the MKB now completed onto Matumba Man. Okay, that's going to help a lot. Yeah, so they can finally kind of deal with this SF, but now that he has Satanic, it's going to get even harder. Yeah. Uh, and with this Aegis, I think they want to go for the high ground. There's no tower left over. And when it comes to buybacks, you've only got it on the Queen of Pain. They're so not ready to go. Kind of, yeah, this is sort of... You actually had uh, a lot of TPs to bottom lane. Both Crit as well as Fly came back home. I think they were actually waiting for the Ember to show up again, but... No signs of him. He's actually a top. He's, yeah, he's showing himself on top lane. 
Maybe they thought he was gonna go for the split, and they wanted to just have heroes ready. But monkeys is gonna make sure to push the push out this bottom lane. There's no reason for them not to, because Matumba Man can just go for the split, mm -hmm. and they definitely don't want that to happen right now. We're giving him a little bit of space for it. But then again, Liquid, no, actually, no, they're, they're so scared. They're sitting inside their base, hoping monkeys will arrive so they can try and take this fight. The line has been drawn. <laughs> it's a weird horizontal line. Is that, eh. yeah. The other players aren't the best at drawing. <laughs> I know this myself. The artistic flyer's just not there. Well, we saw a script try and draw hard earlier today, and that yeah. failed. You just You play Dota all the time. Alright, so top lane push is on its way. The bottom lane's already been pushed out by Boars and the rest of the Great Waves. So the rest of Monkeys do arrive. So here's our 5v5 fight. This is a must win for Liquid. There is no other choice. They protect the Ember Spirit by putting the Lincoln Spear over on him. It's going to wear off and they just instantly refresh it up. And there's Father who's actually sacrificing himself to do this. Because he knows that they get rid of the sigil, but there's your jump in. They catch out Jirax. That's how much they're pushing into him by committing the Abyssal Blade. But Big Daddy, he didn't get any kills from this. Now the Paralyzed and Cast bouncing forward from Jirax. They can't really find an opening. Father's not ready to blink out, but they do get the Searing Chains on Miracle. The Glimmer keep him into safety, but no tail's completely out of mana. So he can't even use his Abyssal Blade at the moment. The side of Fist will keep the Creep Wave at bay, and Monkeys, they kind of need some Arcane Boots. They need some regeneration. Oh, no tail actually just. Oh, they fall off him up! Miracle! Burned out by the Cox, they split the fight. The Cox is actually trapping a little bit of liquid in there. And the hook shot. Oh, where did you control? The SS already brought down the clockwork. Kuro going for that full duration ulti, but the top rack's already taken. There goes your Sonic Wave. And Kuro, he will finish it, but at the same time, he'll die. Father is controlled, and this should actually be the game now. The Ember's up in the air. Matumbo, maybe not. The buyback is there from the Queen of Pain. And Big Daddy, he'll burn the Aegis of the Immortal. Jurax does not have the extra control, but they're looking for the searing chain oh, for the perfect wow, ice path. Just controls them, but it'll be the sacrifice of Noon Meander. He's about to die underneath where that top rax fell. So Liquid, they're forced to buy back only on the Queen of Pain, however. They lose another lane of rax, but they keep the hopes alive. They keep that Ember Spirit up through it all. And this damage can keep increasing. I know it's kind of stupid to say, like, uh, maybe the Ember can just, like, rapier this game to freedom, but... Like, his damage is still up. It's still up very high. It's 12,000 gold now is a difference. Uh, I mean, it's hard to imagine that at one point, just like 10 minutes ago, this game nearly got back to zero after Liquid lost their racks, but... How about how about this thing? The fact that this is now after that fight, the first time Monkeys has an experience advantage in this game. That... It took them 45 minutes to gain an experience advantage in this game. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about, is that Liquid had a lot of opportunities, I feel, to take this game. And they had a lot of different ways they could have held once the Ember had as much farm as he did, but these little mini pickoffs just... You can't really allow them to happen against Monkey's lineup because they just mm -hmm. decide to go for it over and over again. And now you've essentially got one life remaining. That's how you should look at your your racks when you've got the lineup that has a slightly better late game. Mm -hmm. You've got one racks in that bottom racks, uh, and then from there on out, the game just gets so miserable. And at the, the Juggernaut now has an Abyssal Blade, so he's finally got some damage to back up that SMI. Uh, flying. The burn, my control goes for the hook shot, and uh, one swing from Ember Spirit will finish this job. She also correct what I was saying before. This is the second time today this has actually happened, where to build the Lotus Orb, you go the the Plate Mouse second. You actually go for the Perseverance to start with, and then build into the Lotus Orb. Getting the recipe before Plate Mail. He just needs some armor right now. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Like, like why would you go for the Perseverance first? Probably was just nearby it. The Courier was probably way too far away in Fada. He's gonna get spotted by this hawk. He takes it out with the Shivas at least. Final Shriek and it dies. Moon Meander. He's thinking about it. Well, that's more where that came from. There's your roll. Actually, break oh, through the Lincoln Spear before he gets two. the roll. And fade is in way too deep. But someone will actually buy it back into this game. He had a spear on the front lines. So they're just trying to get the hell out of here. Maybe with a little bit of slight of fist and searing chains, they can ensure this kill on the Necro units. Which they're able to do so. But Fada, he was just too caught out. The Juggernaut will bring him down. And there is no Queen of Pain for 106 seconds. Buyback is on cooldown based on time, not money. And the only buybacks they got is, well, it was Clockwork, but Clockwork just bought more. He just bought the Plate Mouse, so he's finished the Lotus Orb. With that, 
I mean, that Blink Abyssal just destroyed the Ember. Mm -hmm. He assumed that the Queen of Pain was always going to be able to save him with that Lincoln Sphere, but you saw Moon Meander just go for that pure outplay. He uses the Heaven's Halberd to proc it first, then roars the Queen of Pain. At the same time, the Ember Spirit goes down, an all-out assault by Monkey Business. They planned that so well when it came to the timing. I love how they're trying to chip Miracle down, but this guy's got a Satanic. He does not care. Yeah, the, top, try. the top lane's pushed in, the mid lane's pushed in so far, and they force off him again. Mind Control's been so good with that. Into a Malediction, so Miracle could have a little bit more trouble, but Jurex is waiting for the perfect time. He doesn't want to waste his Death Ward on a Satanic Shadow Fiend. It's not enough for him to do so. But this bottom rack is dying in the meantime, and Matumblemon started for the steering chain's gonna be back off cooldown. Mind Control still burning off this manner of miracle, but it's still like satanic. And there's your jump in by Big Daddy No Tell, then just goes for it. The clockwork's down for the count, and there really is just nothing left in the arsenal here of Liquid. Queen and uh, across the maiden dies halfway through a duration. Jurax goes for a crit, perfect position for the ice path. He's been flawless throughout this entire game, and this will be a GG. Monkey will take out Liquid. 2-0 in what felt like a very convincing fashion, definitely convincing for game number one, but solid for game number two. Oh yeah, for sure. I think uh, Liquid definitely had opportunities to win this game, but Monkey, I mean, they were so persistent. They had so many different outplays, and uh, something I really want to highlight that I feel like I just didn't talk enough about as an analyst was the healing ward control. Like, mm -hmm. he kept that thing up full duration every single time. It'd be like, four. Slide a fist in a 